Hello again everyone, welcome back to my workshop. And if you like my videos, please do press the like and subscribe buttons. Yes, I know everybody on YouTube says that. But it does help the algorithms uh, find my videos if someone's searching for something. Now, today's video concerns a very interesting uh, little uh, question I was asked. Having done these videos for four years, suddenly I get asked what is effectively the same question by two quite separate people within a couple of weeks of each other. One of them wanted to use the radio to control a vehicle that tows his model out to the flight line and does various things whilst also still controlling the model as well. And then the other person asked about controlling the steering of a glider launch trolley which of course you need to do at the same time as controlling the model. And both of them wondered if using a clone receiver was the way to do it, and it is. So I'm just going to very briefly quiz through how you can control two separate vehicles, i.e. Right, your model aircraft and a tow truck or a glider launch trolley, quite independently of one another. And your aircraft can be running in default transmission mode or double path mode because neither of them will know about the clone mode receiver that's on the ground vehicle. So I've already got the basics set up. Uh, if we can zoom out a little. Yes, here we are. I've got my two servos. One of them is attached to the aircraft receiver and the other one is attached to the ground vehicle receiver. The only stipulation here for the ground vehicle receiver is that it cannot be an assist because they will not go into clone mode, uh, which is a pity because the thought of a gyro stabilized uh, launch trolley was quite nice. So we get going on this. We'll have a look at what's been done. If we go into the function assignment, I've got a basic model and I've set an additional function for steering the ground vehicle, the cart, which is on the same stick as the rudder. As you can see, it's moving the servo because that's the, uh, the ground receiver is the one we're plugged into at the moment. And there is a servo assigned to it and it's way up at channel 16 there. So how are we going to get it out of sockets 1 to 8 on our ground vehicle? Well, we can simply remap. So we come out of there and go to the device explorer. Have a look at receiver outputs. And at the moment, it defaults everything to the channel assignment that's set up in the transmitter. Now, it doesn't have out pin 16, of course, it only has out pins 1 to 8, but steering is on 16. So all we need to do is go to any of the out pins 1 to 8 that we want to plug our uh, little steering servo into and tell it that it takes the steering channel. I'll pick out pin 1 just to prove uh, that I'm not just plugging it into the existing rudder. So out pin 1 choose that and tell it to use what's coming from 16. There we go. And now steering will appear on out pin one, which I can prove we can do. There we go. Come out of four, which was the rudder into number one. And lo and behold, it steers as well. So, uh, what else would you want to do? Well, if you need any fail-safes set up on your ground vehicle, now is the time to do them. Any travel adjusts, anything like that, uh, get them all done. Because once we've gone into clone mode, you won't be able to see it anymore. And come out of there. As you can see, everything's running quite happily. Now it's time to put it into clone mode. 
So for that, we go to the Jetty Box emulator. And for that, we move sideways to the receiver, down to the receiver, down again, I think. Yes, we don't want measure. We want to go to the right of that. Main settings, come down. Now, this can only be done through Jetty Box. It cannot be done through Device Explorer. Here we are. Receiver mode, normal. The only option is a long press of the left button. So we go long press left. There, clone mode, say OK. Pop out of that. Servo still works. Now let's reboot everything. Now, good. I've plugged the battery back into the res ground receiver. Yeah, but as you can see, we never got the receiver bound, the bings, whatever, no message, and we're getting nothing on the antenna values. But we're getting nothing there either. And the reason we're getting nothing there is because the transmitter is not seeing uh, a valid receiver that it's bound to, and so it's not actually sending out the data yet. So the clone will only work once another receiver is bound. So let's do that. Let's plug in the airborne receiver. Don't you do that, I can use its multiplex plugs. And we need to bind it. Yes. Okay, so the aircraft receiver is working. It's doing all its stabilization stuff. And there now you can see that the ground servo is working. Whereas a moment ago, it wasn't because we hadn't done that one. So don't expect your cloned ground receiver to work if the airborne one isn't also switched on and going. But let's just prove that they're not just using the same thing. Okay, so remember, we plugged into uh, channel uh, socket number one there but it is channel 16 servo. So what we can do is go to the, for instance, the fine tuning, the uh, dual rate for it, dual rate steering, and let's just turn it down. Turn it down to a nice low value so you can see the difference. And now that should only rotate by the 19 degrees. There you go, you see? So you do have fully independent control of all the settings. Uh, it's just you can't change anything in the receiver now because it's on clone. So there you go. Uh, two completely different vehicles controlled at the same time by the same radio.